Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. Hello everybody and welcome to another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I am the Bishop of the Burn, Nick, and it is just me again. Um... I, I, you know, I've had a couple of listeners reach out and tell me uh, that uh, I need to put a, together a calendar of when I don't have somebody and uh, that I can try and get like one of them to sub in. And uh, I, I do appreciate the offer. I really do. Uh, it's not that I'm not going to take you up on it. Someday I will. Uh, the problem is that requires me to be more organized. And that has been kind of my issue is that... Uh, um, there are weeks that come by where I am flying by the seat of my pants, and today is one of those. Um, with the Easter holiday and everything, it just kind of all uh, got away from me. And next thing you know, it's Monday, and I'm like, oh, crap, I got to do an episode. And, uh, you know, kind of reach out to some of the usual gang of suspects, and they're busy. And so it's like, okay, you know, we'll we'll make this work. We'll We'll figure this out. So today, I am smoking something new. I'm smoking something from Drew Estate. I am smoking the Blackened S84 uh, Shade to Black. This is the second release in the Blackened line. Um, I am smoking the 6x52 Toro, and it features a Connecticut Ecuadorian wrapper, uh, a Connecticut River Valley Broadleaf Maduro binder, and Nicaraguan Maduro and Pennsylvania Broadleaf Maduro filler. Um, and the S84, the S, uh, is for shade and, uh, this is the best guess for me. So this is the collaboration, uh, between the folks at Blackened, um, uh, I guess whiskey, spirits, whatever, um, Metallica and Drew Estates and, um, the song Fade to Black, uh, came out in 1984. So I'm guessing that we're going with shade to black because ha ha it's clever it's a shade uh connecticut shade and uh you know we're going with that so that's what i'm going with i don't know if it's accurate but uh well by god that's that's what i'm going with so anyway um let's go ahead and get this going i left the fancy foot band on uh for you youtube people uh so you can see the uh the full cigar before i take it all apart and everything but uh Let's go ahead and get this guy prepped for a smoke. And that means it is time for the cut. And the official cutting is brought to you by Dan the Man Ponder at Riverman Cigar Company of Crestwood, Missouri. And uh, just like this cigar was a uh, cigar showcased at PCA uh, the other week, Dan has been getting in um, other stuff from PCA. You know, you got to, the stuff's rolling in as it comes. So you're going to want to check in with Dan over there at Riverman to see what's new, what's hot and what's available. But, uh, you know, if you're in the St. Louis area, you can do so. And we've had some (coughs) decent weather, some crappy weather. We're in a real rainy thing going on right now. To be honest, um, as I sit here recording, I think I'm under like a tornado something or other. I don't know if it's a watch warning. I don't think it's a warning. I think it's a watch. Um, but we have like a pretty severe line of thunderstorm barreling into this area here in the next couple of hours. So, um, I gotta be conscious of that too. But anyway, um, uh, if you're in the St. Louis area, you can swing by Dan's place, check it out, sit down, have a nice new cigar and, uh, you know, enjoy yourself. But if you're not in the St. Louis area and you still want to know what kind of new stuff is rolling into the shop, you can give Dan or Miss Cindy or Little John a call over there and they will be happy to walk you around the humidor and talk to you over the phone and get a nice shipment of cigars prepped for you right away. That's Riverman Cigar Company of Crestwood, Missouri. And now it's time to go ahead and cut the cigar. You know, I had a cigar earlier today that uh, I was ill prepared for. I was out and about, and I did not have my normal lighter and cutter. Um, But I always keep a lighter and cutter in the car, because you never know when you're going to need one. Now, the the cutter I have in the car, admittedly, it's one of those cheap um, plastic uh, perfect cuts. Um, And 
Then I keep another uh, Vertigo Cyclone out in the car. And, you know, they're just there. That way, like I said, if I ever need one, I, I have it. And, uh, you know, by God, circumstances were what they were, and I ended up needing it today. And, um, you know, I uh, I had a bit of a draw issue in the beginning of that cigar, but by, I'd say by after the final, th- or the first third of it, um, it opened up, and so, you know, whatever. But I was lamenting the fact that I didn't bring my lighter and my cutter with me, uh, and then I only had the car cutter. Um, it normally does fine, but in this case, it was a little off, so... I don't know if this is a PSA of always remember your cutter and your lighter or if it was me just grousing, but, uh, you know, it was a story I had. So anyway, cold draw time on the blackened S84 and hmm. (coughs) Wow. Um, that tickled the back of my throat. Um, you know, uh, it almost has. And it has nothing to do with how this was stored. This was stored, I bought it, and um, it was stored with two other cigars in a bag that I bought there. Um, and it's it's ones that are going to be coming up on the show eventually, too. Other PCA releases. Um, but uh, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm nutty. But it almost has a slight... <sighs> I, I feel nuts saying this, and I know somebody's going to be like, what the fuck, you know, and I'm going to hear from people. It almost has like a little minty component. Not that it's like hard minty or anything like that, but like maybe like a very ever so slight, an ever so slight kind of minty component to the cold draw. Um this is not a flavored or infused cigar from Drew Estate. This is just a straight tobacco cigar. So there should be no mint infusion. Um, I don't know if maybe this was stored at the shop that I purchased this next to some, you know, Java mints or something like that. I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. But yeah, this, uh, this cigar, I, to me, maybe if I were to do this tomorrow, I would have something totally different. But to me right now, it's got a slight minty component to the cold draw. So we're going to go ahead and fire this guy up. And, you know, I was sitting back kind of wondering, what am I going to talk about today? I've got a funny story um, about my car, uh, my oil change that uh, I can share. But admittedly, that story is not going to take too long. So it became a question of, okay, what am I going to talk about? And a bit of news came across my my wire. And um, while it's not cigar related, um, it's uh, I think it, it it it's a conversation that needs to be had. Um. And I think more people need to have this conversation because I think we've gone too far. Um, anyway, so I'll, I'll, I'll cover the main topic first and then we'll we'll get into my oil change. So I. Uh, hmm. Interesting. So I just did a retro hail. Sorry, I, I there's entirely too much dead space. I know. Um. But, uh, <coughs> man, it's smoky in here. I will say this kick, thing is, is it's smoking well. Uh, it's not kicking off like a ton. Like, it's not like sitting there just burning like crazy without me doing anything to it a little bit. But, um, but, uh, it's kind of got a little, that, that, that Connecticut wrapper adds a little creaminess to it. Um, but then you have that, that rich kind of dark earthiness from that Maduro that uh, makes up the filler and the binder. Um, but the retro hail, at least off the front end, very, very smooth. Um, it did not slip my throat. You know, I have smoked the M81, which is the first blackened um, cigar. To be completely fair, that cigar is not for me. It's too much Maduro. So I was very curious how this was going to was gonna play out with having 
the, the same Maduro guts, but then uh, throw a Connecticut shade wrapper on it. So we'll see how this plays out throughout the rest of this. But anyway, back to the topic at hand. So um, there's a another podcast that I follow called Cartoonist Kayfabe. And it is two comic book artists that, that dive into um, different projects and really like, you know, pick them apart and talk about you know, the different art styles and methods and things of that nature. And they talk about his, you know, comics history and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And um, one of the guys on that show is uh, named Ed Piscor, was named Ed Piscor. And um, Ed, you know, Ed got in trouble last week. Um, I'm not quite clear on all the details. Um, it's not... <sighs> I'm not clear on all the details, so I'm not going to get into all that. Suffice to say, there were some allegations being thrown around. You can Google Ed Piscor. It's P-I-S-K-O-R, um, you know, allegations, and you can read whatever you want to read. Um, but the bottom line is, um, for the last week, this this guy had been dealing with um, cancel culture just coming right at him. Um, all the companies that he had projects with dropped him his uh co-host and friend on the cartoonist kayfabe show you know dropped him and said that he was cutting his ties with him uh over allegations and everything and and admittedly you know i'm not excusing i'm not saying that if he did what he's being accused of then obviously that's an issue however today as i record this on monday april 1st he put up a post on his Facebook page where he ba it was ba essentially a suicide note. And he, uh, you know, talked about how um, the uh, the Internet came and murdered him and, um, you know, how he just couldn't deal with it. And anyway, the long and short of it is um, at 41 years old, Ed Piscor, you know, took his own life today because for the last week, you know, he's... He's been in the center of of a of a shit storm, and uh, I've never met the guy, but like like all of you with me, you watch a guy, you you listen to 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 the show, you enjoy the show, and over time, you kind of feel like you know him at least a little bit, um, and uh, and so I'm surprised, you know, I, I'm I'm sad and. Again, it's it's you know he left behind his his parents and his sister, you know. I mean, he's only forty one. He's younger than I am, and uh, it's fucked up. And and I, but anyway, this got me thinking about kind of where we're at as a society, and uh, how how we jump to to we don't. I don't know. I need to be careful here because, again, like there are allegations out there and they're not great. But I don't want to. So I don't want to defend if he if he. But see, we're never going to hear his side of the story now because he decided to just go. Um, but and maybe that is his side of the story. I don't know. But the thing is, is that uh, we're very quick to jump on the cancel culture bandwagon. We're very quick to want to end somebody for transgressions and and I'm not saying that maybe some things shouldn't be unforgivable um cuz y'all I mean unless unless you're new to the show y'all know my opinion about anybody who does anything with kids um and it's uh it's pretty cut and dry but that's neither here nor there what is is that uh I feel like we could stand to have a little bit more compassion and understanding of of all sides while something is getting sorted out and sussed out. Um, we live in a day and age where you can fake damn near anything anymore. You can fake a video. You can fake a photo. You sure as shit can fake uh, text um, transcripts. If you want to, you know, fake screenshots. Um, 
you know, you can you can ruin somebody pretty quickly these days, and especially if you you come at them in in various arenas. And so, um, this is a situation where the internet it's just so strong with its uh, judgment that people can't handle it. And, you know, I, I've i said it probably on here. I know I've said it many, many times before that I'm so incredibly glad that I grew up in a time period before social media. Uh, I'm glad that I got <coughs> out of college before Facebook was a thing. Facebook was just uh, one of those platforms that you had to have a college ID and it was only available at certain schools at the time that I was in college. And so, you know, it was, it wasn't a thing. Fa- uh, MySpace was kind of around, but MySpace was kind of different. And um, I don't feel like uh, MySpace kind of, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's plenty of people that can cite examples of, you know, internet bullying and problems with MySpace, but I don't feel like that really crept into the picture until a little later when social media became much more of a like, um, uh, uh, just just vast thing. And so anyway, I'm so glad that I didn't grow up in that because, um, you know, like anybody, I'm sure the vast majority of you listeners can remember at least one kid that picked on you in school. Everybody's been bullied before, you know. Um, I can't say that I made it through school without any sort of getting picked on, you know. It's just one of those things. It's school. Every It, it happens to everybody. Um, the problem, though, that you have now is when we were in school, you know, depending upon the severity of your bullying and everything, things sucked from, like, let's say... I don't know, 7.30, 8 a.m. until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then you were able to go home, decompress, and move on with your life for a little while before the next day when it started back up again. And yeah, you had to deal with that five days a week, but you had the weekend to decompress and everything else. And so, you know, you had time to come back down to earth and to realize that, you know what, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's not, it's not the end of the world. I'll move on from it. Now, granted, at the time, you don't, you don't realize that. And that's the other problem. We as kids all think that we're that much more important or everything's that much more important than it is. But that's a whole different conversation. But now, now these young people, you know, they go home and by the time they get home, they've got eight alerts on four different platforms telling them how much they suck. And those alerts and those those comments and those problems continue all night long into the morning. And there's never a moment of reprieve. There's never a moment of relaxation. There's never a moment to, to, to break away from it and to say, you know, like to, to, to take a break. There's never a moment for that. Um, and even if you personally take a break, at some point, you know, something's going to be said and you're going to find out about it and it's going to be a whole thing. And, and it's just, it's bullshit. It's absolute utter bullshit. I distinctly remember Facebook used to have a thing where I think you had to be 18 in order to join it. Somehow or another that went out the window because I know people that have, you know, uh, kids, um, you know, on there that are, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. And, you know, what the fuck, you know, our brains were not designed to handle this much input from this many people. You know, um, we're tribal animals. I read a, uh, I read a study or an article about a study that talked about how human beings are tribal animals that we, when we, when we were, you know, growing up and developing as a, as a species, that, uh, you know, we had our tribes and we respected the input and the, the uh, um, opinion of our peers and our people and our tribes. And what has happened with both the Internet and specifically social media is now we've opened it up to where you as an individual can put your opinion out there on whatever platform you choose. 
and suddenly the totality of the internet, which realistically is damn near everybody, um, at least, you know, a vast majority of human beings on this planet, um, have some sort of connection to the internet. And so now you've opened it up to where you've, you've left your individual tribe and you've opened it up for the whole world to decide, you know, what they think of your opinion. And our brains just cannot comprehend and, and process that much information and that much opinion and that much criticism and that much uh, feedback. And so what ends up happening is you have guys that, like Ed Piscor, they get in the eye of the storm. Uh, allegations come out um, that uh, are less than flattering. And... You know, he uh, he gets in the eye of the storm and a, like a week later, he's he's killing himself. And, you know, part of me also says that if you're going to put yourself if you're going to do that, then uh, there may have been other issues that were at play above and beyond this. But but that was the thing that threw him over. That was the thing that pushed him to the edge and threw him over. And it's sad. And we shouldn't we shouldn't do this to each other. And. You know, I'm not saying that some people don't deserve to be canceled, but I do think we need to be less judgmental and we need to not um we need to not immediately jump to the conclusion uh that somebody needs to lose everything and uh be canceled. I think we need to assess situation and honestly, you know, is it your business? I mean, that's the thing. Um, these allegations that have come out, you know, it's like, look, the uh, the the potential victims, if they wanted to um, press any charges or something like that, let them do that. But like, why do we have to per- why do we have to prosecute everybody in the court of public opinion? I don't know. Anyway, so it's it's just sad to me. Um, Because like I said, this is a guy that over the last, you know, five or so years I've been watching and and processing and and listening to and, you know, seeing his YouTube, seeing his podcast, you know, um, listening to his opinions upon, you know, various uh, um, comic books, comic books and projects that I'm interested in and, uh, you know, I realize that the comics aren't necessarily everybody's cup of tea, and that's fine. But that's not the point. The point is that there's a 41-year-old man who, at the beginning of the day that I recorded this, was alive. And now, at the end of the day, has taken his own life because uh, the internet determined with um, whatever evidence was put out that that was it. He's done. And he's over. And... uh you know, that was that was the end of that. And um, it's sad. And I, I just kind of, I don't know. Anyway, that was my greater topic. I mean, you know, guys, maybe, you know, shoot me an email, nick at cigarpulpit.com. And, uh, you know, just, just what, what would your life have been like if social media would have been around when you were a kid? What would your life have been like if social media would have been around when you were in college? You know, what kind of stupid shit did you do? And you don't have to tell me the exact stupid shit. But, like, I'm sure we all did stupid shit in in high school, college, hell, grade school, that, you know, you wouldn't have wanted the whole world to know. And um, it, it's just, it's ridiculous. And where does it stop, too? Because you've got some of these guys that have been canceled because they tweeted something 10 years ago and then all of a sudden it comes back to haunt them and you know they're like I've evolved I've changed my opinion blah 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 and all that I mean do we have to be monitoring our social media from day one all the way up to today to to you know uh, adjust and and I don't know I just I hate social media I guess that's the real bottom line for this is that We need to show each other a lot more grace and compassion, and I fucking hate social media. Um, But what I'm not hating is I'm not hating the blackened 
S84 um, for a couple reasons. First, throughout that entire, you know, soapboxy rant, um, this thing stayed lit and it didn't like it didn't have an issue. Um, I was able to uh, go back to it. And it's immediately got a great uh, a great burn going. Um, burn line on it is really straight. Um, the draw on it is ridiculously good. Um, you know, it's, it's a solid, solid cigar. I'm digging it really, really, I'm digging it a lot right now. Um, I'm still in the first third, uh, you know, um, you know how it goes with these solo shows I'm talking. And so I can't quite smoke as rapidly. So I don't know if I'm going to get through this whole cigar before it's all said and done. But, um, so far initial impressions, I like this one far far and above the m81 um the m81 just was too much maduro for me i know if you love maduro it's probably up your alley this one feels more balanced feels more refined and uh it still has a little it has strength to it but it has um you know some some like I said, some balance to it that the M81 did not have. So I am enjoying the S84. Uh, so now um, let's let's do this, and then I'll tell my oil change story. It's time for the Villiger Cigars Entertainment Report, brought to you by Villiger. Villiger Cigars, one of the leading cigar and cigarello manufacturers in the world, Founded in 1888 and still family owned and operated. Head over to VilligerCigars.com and check the store locator to find a shop near you that carries them. We guarantee that Villiger Cigars will be a wonderful addition to your humidor and cigar rotation. I saw some movies, guys. I went and I saw a couple of movies um, this past week. Um, or, well, since I last recorded. So, um, I guess it would have been Thursday. Um... Yeah, Thursday, I went and saw Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, and um, I'm a big Ghostbusters fan. Uh, I loved it. I loved it. It was such a good movie. I know the critics have kind of torn it apart, but um, the audiences love it, and I'll tell you, as, as somebody who was in the audience, I loved it. It was fun. It was so much fun. It kind of had a little... I will say that the build up to the bad guy was a lot and then they kind of took care of that bad guy pretty quickly. So it feels like maybe the movie was slightly a little rushed. Maybe could have, you know, if they would have maybe had maybe 15 more minutes to draw out some of the the stuff with the bad guy to like really like show like, oh yeah, no, he's he's a big threat and we really are struggling here, but like um by and large, uh it it was a it was a good movie. Super fun. I walked out of there with a big old smile on my face. It was it was a fun, fun movie. My other movie that I saw that was also super fun was uh, Godzilla and Kong. Um, what's the name of that? It, uh, damn it, I had it. And uh, it, I think it might also be like a... Uh, uh, yeah, it's also an empire. Godzilla and Kong, the new empire. So we have Frozen Empire, and we have the new empire. Well, Godzilla and Kong, the new empire, is the sequel to Godzilla vs. Kong that came out, like, I think in 2021. Um, but, uh, again, stupid fun movie. It was great. Is it going to be winning, like, you know, best picture for best screenplay? And, you know, is it is it nearly as emotionally deep as Godzilla Minus One? No. This was giant monsters beating the holy piss out of one another. You had, you know, um, King Kong uh, hurting his arm, so he had to get this, like, uh armor thing that like uh, gave him strength in his arm and i mean so now he's like roboted up so you have like 
Mecha Kong with Godzilla fighting against an army of like bad monkeys and and all this and and like another like this one was a an ice breathing lizard thing kind of like Godzilla but it it was frozen it was ice and everything it was badass it was so fun it was just a slobber knocker of uh, monsters kicking the shit out of each other so I thoroughly enjoyed that a lot. Um, don't go into it expecting Shakespeare, but if you're looking for something fun to um, maybe take, um, if you've got kids that are, you know, maybe like 8 to 12, I, or, you know, somewhere in there, I mean, my God, how how can they not like this movie? It's And, it, and they get the monster stuff going really early. I mean, you're not waiting around. They're not, they, they know we don't go to Godzilla movies for the people. We go to watch Godzilla and other monsters kick the shit out of each other. And they do. And they show a lot of it. And it's fun. I liked it. So, Godzilla and Ghostbusters both get two thumbs up for me. Um, oh, wait. I don't know if I can say that. I think that's a Siskel and Ebert copyright thing. So, um, we'll give them five stars. I think that's that's acceptable. Um, anyway, I dug them. It was fun. I had my son this weekend, so in terms of TV, it was uh, all Thomas uh, pretty much all the time. So, you know, nothing new to report there. Um, I did have fun this weekend with him for Easter. You know, we got to do the egg hunt and that sort of thing. My son, um, it's funny, he uh, he's not great at Easter egg hunts. He will find one and he's happy he focused on that he found the one he opens it up he's wanting what's inside of it and everything and i'm like dude there's like a bunch more go get them go get them and it's like a chore for him to go and find the rest of them he just he, he found his one and uh that's all he cared about you know so he's a, he's a he's a simple child in that regard and i i appreciate that um but uh you know sometimes it's kind of like well dude you know i i stuffed all these easter eggs for you it's like Go find them, you know, but anyway. Um, okay, so before we do three cigars smoked and enjoyed this week, I will tell you my oil change story. So um, you know what you don't want to hear when you go and get an oil change? Um, I I had probably, I, I never have heard this before uh, when I went and got an oil change. So I went um, last week um, to get one on Wednesday. And I should have talked about this on Tuesday show when Trey Mackett was here, but we got on uh, all sorts of other stuff. But anyway, um, you know, I pull in the Valvoline and they're doing the whole thing where you stay in your car, which I love that. I love that. I don't know why they weren't doing that pre-COVID. It has been the best. If anything good came out of COVID, it was the fact that you can sit in your car and they will just change your oil right there while you sit there and you're in and out super quick. I love it so much. Um, so... The guys are, you know, in the little thing down below my car doing stuff, draining the oil. And they pop, you know, I pop the hood and the guys up top, you know, they get in there and they remove some cover. And all of a sudden I see the one guy kind of rear back and uh, he's talking with another dude and they're kind of looking. And the guy who reared back, he comes around to my window. He was like my point of contact guy. He was the guy that kept talking to me. He comes around to the window and he's like, so uh, um, I think he got something dead in there and i'm like i'm sorry what and he's like yeah i think something died in your engine um we can't see it from the top but when we remove that cover like the smell hit us like right in the face just punch us right in the face i'm like oh shit he goes yeah it smells pretty bad and i'm like thinking to myself well i don't have any smell in the cab like i'm not getting any sort of smell in the cab but um, anyway, so I was like, okay, so you didn't see it. And he goes, no. And he said, the guys down below, they can't see anything either. He said, so it's pretty up there. Um, he's like, probably something small for us both to like not be able to see it. He's like, but uh, yeah, you definitely got something going on. He's like, I just want to let you know in case you're driving along and you kind of feel something drop away from your car he's like it it may you know it may be a part he said but it's probably not a part and i'm like oh okay well good to know so um 
yeah, that's that's a new one for me. Never encountered that before. Never was told that before. And, um, you know, it got me thinking. I'm like, shit, I wonder how frequently that happens at, like, oil change places. That they're in the engine and all of a sudden they're, like, coming across, like, you know, a, a squirrel or a mouse or something that got up in there and, like, you know, was looking for warmth or something. And that's the thing. We've had such varying weather here in the area, you know, ups and downs and temperature fluctuations that I'm sure what it was is something that, you know, it was cold outside. I got home kind of late one night or something like that, and it decided it was going to crawl up in my engine for some warmth and probably uh, got close to something it shouldn't have and, and fried. But, uh, you know, what I'm really hoping is that it's not like a mouse chewing on wires and shit because... You know, I've done some internet research, and apparently that can get stupid expensive. But everything's been working fine. Um, so I don't know. Um, you know, I just I don't know. So yeah, that's uh, that's my oil change story. Is that well, something crawled up my engine and died. Um. The other thing that I learned, and I didn't realize this. So like, oil change places like this was a Valvoline. Little little pull up quick stop Valvoline kind of deal. I had no idea that um, I'm talking too much and I need to puff on the cigar once in a while. Um, I had no idea that prices fluctuate uh, by geographic location. So I've had oil changes at Valvolines in other areas that um, cost me as much as twenty dollars more than what my oil change was uh, last week. In fact, last week, I not only got the oil change, but I also had a, a headlight bulb go out, and they swapped out the headlight bulb, and that was like a $25 deal, which, you know, I know that's high, but realistically, um, it, it was a service that I was not going to do. I wasn't going to get in there. I got these fat hot dog fingers. They're not going to get into there and swap out a bulb and everything else. And actually, that brings me to a bone of contention I have, but I'll, I'll circle back to the bone of contention. Um, the bottom line is, even with the bulb, I, you know, my oil change was like 106 bucks, and I've spent that on just an oil change out of Alvaline on the other on the Illinois side of the river. So, like, I don't know... What the difference is in geography, probably taxes or some bullshit. But, uh, yeah, the pricing on these things are, are funky. So, you know, if you're going to, like, one of these Valvoline quick stop things and maybe you've got multiple in your area, call and price them out. You know what? They You might be going to the, one of the higher priced ones and there might be one that's closer or just as close that actually is cheaper. I don't know. Um but no, getting back to the headlight thing for a moment, you know what pisses me right off about that headlight being out is about a year ago, I swapped out both headlights on my car at um, a Dobbs and I went in because I had a headlight out and I was like, guys, you know, I need a new headlight and let's go ahead and swap them both because I know that um, if I swap one and I don't swap the second... The second one's going to go out like tomorrow, you know, and they told me that my headlights were like a solid like component that it wasn't like individual bulbs that I had to swap out the whole like light fixture on both things. So it was it was not cheap. It was like in the like couple hundred bucks range for me to get new headlights on my Pathfinder. Well, then, you know, I mentioned that to the guy at the Valvoline. He goes, no, nah, man. This is all you need. And he like got the got the replacement. And then he went and got the old one. He goes, Yeah, here's your old one. And he's like, you know, you want it? And I'm like, no, you can throw it away. And he goes, Yeah, no, you can just swap that out. So now I feel like I got fucking cheated from Dobbs. Like I you know, if they could have just swapped out bulbs and saved me money, um, I feel like that's some crap. And so yeah, I'm I'm not really thrilled with uh with that Dobbs and how, how I was treated there. So they may have just lost my business because that was kind of my go-to spot for um, any sort of like car repairs and things of that nature, you know, tires, things of that stuff. But I think they just lost my business because they decided to bend me over on some headlights when they could have just swapped out some bulbs. Anyway, 
Our fat. Still digging the S84. Uh, Still smoking really, really well. Um, trying to uh, get it to the maybe the transition to the second, third, but we'll see. Why don't we go ahead and do this now? Guess what, motherfucker? Time for three cigars you smoked and enjoyed this week. And let's go ahead and bring up the list. So, um, boy, I have been keeping this list, and it has just grown and grown and grown and grown. And so now I need to real quickly see when the last time I did this was, which was the 26th. So, um, okay, we got lots of options, but actually we have few options because while there's been more than a few cigars, it uh, kind of been the same things. Um, so the uh, first one that I'll mention is the... Uh, um, I smoke a lot of the Perdomo Habano Sun Growns. Uh, you guys know that. It makes this list pretty frequently. But I, I went out and I ended up um, smoking a Perdomo 20th Anniversary Sun Grown. Not one that I smoke like on the regular. And it was just super good. Super good. Super smooth. Had nice uh, spicy kind of component to it. But just such a really good cigar. I dug it a lot. And even though I had uh, a crack in the wrapper... Um, it smoked right past that, and it smoked really, really well. It did not explode on me or anything like that. I was really hesitant to uh, even light it up when I saw the condition it was in. Um, and that's on me. I bought it from the humidor that way. And, um, you know, it kind of pisses me off that I didn't notice the crack when I was... Because I try to inspect them. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm in a shop and I'm looking and I'm picking up a cigar, I always hold the cigar up. And I do like a 360 turn and I inspect it. I look for cracks before I buy. Because nothing sucks more than buying a cracked cigar. It's like if I if it cracks and, and it's my fault, that's on me. But nothing sucks more than spending good money on an already cracked cigar. So um, I didn't notice it. That was on me and uh, I had to deal with it. Um, my next one that I smoked... Um, is the uh, Metropolitan Habano uh, by Ferio Tego. You know, I don't know if the Metropolitan series gets, um, I don't think it quite gets the love that it should. I mean, this is this is one of the series that Nat Sherman had that, um, you know, Michael Herklotz was able to continue on with, with Ferio Tego. And uh, boy, that, that Habano, it's just a solid, great go-to cigar. And, um, you know, I, 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 I enjoyed it. I need to get more of them. It's, it's, it's a good go-to cigar. Um, and then the last one that I have smoked a lot of, like a lot, as I'm looking at my list, like, uh, the majority, almost the majority of my week, um, has been the, uh, Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua, the blue band one smoked the shit out of that this past week um and that is one of my go-tos it had been a long time since i'd had one um and uh you know i i found some again at a decent price and it was one of those things where i stocked up and when i stocked up you know um it uh it it it, it it's it's been my go one of my go-tos for the last week um i'm digging it I'm digging a lot. So anyway, so that's uh, that's three cigars we smoked and enjoyed this week. Um, now let's go ahead and hear from our friends at My Monthly Cigars. This would normally be the time that I give some information about My Monthly Cigars, but I've hired that out this week, so take it away. My Monthly Cigars is a premium cigar subscription service. It comes in a variety of different size boxes at affordable prices. Use offer code PULPIT and get free shipping on your first box and 20% off any items in the online store at MyMonthlyCigars.com. That's offer code PULPIT. Thanks. The Maduro is definitely coming through more on the uh, S84. Um, it's, uh, you know, you kind of get that, that extra bit of leathery earthiness. Um, less leather because, you know, you don't have the wrapper, but, uh, kind of that earthy component, um, definitely comes through the wrap, you know, the shade wrapper 
to be honest, as I'm kind of transitioning from the first third to the second third, kind of, oh, eh, maybe actually a little past. But um, the wrapper, I, I don't know if it quite adds anything flavor-wise at this point. I do think the Maduro kind of overpowers. But what it does is it takes that Maduro and kind of pulls it back just a bit. With the, with the Maduro wrapper, it's just like, like I said, it's it's all up in your face, all Maduro all the time. This, at least, with the shade wrapper, um, it kind of gives you a little bit of a reprieve from all of that, you know, uh, dark Maduro and allows you to um, uh, have a little, again, I keep going back to it, a little bit more of a balanced smoking experience. So, um, yeah, I would say it's a really earthy cigar at this point, it's just not um, the wrapper is is it's helping, but it's not like providing necessarily a flavor component, if that makes sense. Um, <coughs> oh my! Um, <coughs> uh, the retro hail. Sorry, that's on me. The retro hail um, has picked up a little bit since the very beginning. Um, a little bit more, um, not really, I not a ton of like pepper and spice. It's just strong. It's just getting stronger. The retro hail is getting stronger than um, where we uh, than where we were in the beginning of the cigar. And um, but it's good. I mean, it's it. I'm still digging it. I would smoke this again. The M81, truthfully, if I were gifted it, if I were given it. You know, that's one thing. Would I go out of my way to go and purchase the M81? I mean, if there was nothing else in the humidor, maybe. But, like, realistically, it is not my favorite cigar. It's too one note. It's too the same thing. Um, but I am digging the hell out of uh, the S84. Uh, so, so you know what? The first one's not for me. The second one definitely is more in my wheelhouse so i'm digging it um in terms of uh my monthly cigars i kind of like started doing the cigar review as soon as i got out of the the ad um while you're over there at mymonthlycigars.com check out fucking good coffee and uh if you're looking for information about the fucking good cigar that he's got coming out soon he does have an opportunity on his website where you can sign up to get email notifications about that and give information about how you can pre-order it and all that fun stuff. So make sure you do all that over there at MyMonthlyCigars.com. Um, I am on Instagram at The Cigar Pulpit. I'm also on Facebook where we have the Cigar Pulpit Parishioners Group. You can get in on the fun there. Um, Twitter and uh, slash X, I'm on there. YouTube where you can watch this. And um, Pulpit Fest, Pulpit Fest 2024, still, you know, August 23rd through the 25th, Palm Coast, Florida. Um, get your tickets. They are complimentary, but we need it for headcount purposes over at Eventbrite, B-R-I-T-E, Eventbrite.com. And um, get in on the fun. Uh, we've got a nice group of people, uh, at least based off the tickets so far. We got a nice group of people that are starting to form up and come together. I think it's going to be a fun time. Uh, I was uh, spitballing a little bit today, coming up with some ideas of uh, things we can do. Because um, uh, in years past, Pulpit Fest has been a very casual um, ed uh, event. It's been, you know, everybody comes together and basically it's conversation, cigars, drinking, and just kind of hanging out. And um, obviously that's going to be welcome and a part of this year's Pulpit Fest. However, um, given the fact that we're going to Florida and we're, we're you know, kind of expanding it out, doing a little bit more, you know, I, I felt like we need to have some some um, some things, some 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 agenda items to to touch on. And so um, I need to run those by, you know, Ken and talk to him about some of that but uh you know i i think we're gonna have a fun time um some competitions and things like that that everybody can you know choose to take part in if they wish or you know not if they don't want to but uh you know um i think it's gonna be a fun time we're gonna have all kinds of fun games and stuff going on that uh 
you know, kind of adds to the environment. So, um, so get your tickets in on that and come on down to Palm Coast. It's going to be a great time. And for all of you Florida listeners, and I know there's quite a few of you, um, you don't really have an excuse. I'm coming to your area. I know that Florida is a big state and I know that, you know, I'm saying like, come to Palm Coast. And it's like, well, shit, that might be five hours away from me. You know, come on. It's a weekend. There's going to be all kinds of fun people there. You're going to enjoy it. So, um, come on over to uh, Pulpit Fest and get in on the fun there. So now, um, I think that's basically what I got. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll kind of go from there. I have, um, I know, um, uh, I said it before and, uh, you know, and everything. I've got a handful of different manufacturers who uh, reached out for me to do interviews at PCA. Obviously, I didn't go. Um, and so we're going to be getting schedules uh, put together there um, so that uh, we can get that scheduled out. And um, then from there, I will work on, you know, for those listeners who reached out and said, you know, I'll be on, I'll be on. You know, I will work on building out a calendar um, so that uh, we can get some stuff scheduled and everything else. Um, quite frankly, um, <laughs> it's one of those things where I don't think you guys quite realize just how like on the fly some of this actually happens. And I know that it comes across that way. I'm sure this episode definitely does. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to manage a lot and, uh, there's a lot going on in the personal life that is adding some additional uh, stresses and, and taking up my time that need to be addressed first. And so um, I promise I will get a calendar pulled together so that we can do uh, so we can do less of these solo episodes because as much as perhaps you guys might be tired of hearing me just talk um, by myself, Trust me, I'm even more tired of doing solo episodes. Um, I just also am not the kind of guy who's going to call somebody and be like, or, you know, reach out to somebody and be like, hey, are you available to record in like an hour? And mind you, I started recording this tonight at um, 945 Central Time. So if you're East Coast, that's 1045. Um, you know, it's, ooh, there's the thunder. It's, uh, it's getting late and... Um, you know, I'm not going to just like spring it on somebody. I need it to be planned out in advance and uh, and scheduled. So, you know, that's uh, it's definitely on my to do list. Um, I have my tax appointment a week from today. That kind of, quite frankly, is uh, looming large and uh, uh, causing me a little bit more um, not stress, but well, kind of some stress. But that, that's taking up more brain cells than uh, building a calendar at this moment. So, you know, I have other things that once they kind of pass, hopefully things can kind of settle down a bit. Um, the month of May tends to be very busy with uh, newspaper stuff and all that. I'm hoping that maybe when we get to June, uh, June might uh, open up and be a little bit more easy um for me in that regard so we'll see we'll we'll figure it out you know it's one of those things there's never a good time for a lot of things you know it's like there's just never a good time and so you just got to make time and that's 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 what it boils down to for me is i just got to make time anyway guys uh i am about halfway through the blackened s uh 84 I'm digging the hell out of it. I would recommend it if you're looking for something that has um, a Connecticut shade wrapper, but also has um, some strength and body to it. You know, this is definitely one of those cigars that I would recommend. I I, I actually really do like. I like this so much better, so much better than the Black and M81. Um, so I'm so incredibly happy that uh, they came out with this and that I tried it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm digging it. I like it. You guys, uh, if, if you're looking for something like that, give it a try. I like it. 
anyway, uh, this has been another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Nick. Everybody, stay safe and stay smoky. before the lightning starts. So, later guys.